I am literally in the car with Chris. Hey Chris. And my mum's here driving on the other side. <laughs> oh hi. <laughs> I wasn't sure if she wanted to be in, in film. We are just on the motorway on the way to the hospital. I am getting my tilt table test. I don't know, I normally sit down and film before I do my appointments, but I've been so nervous. I have been horrible to be around because I'm so anxious. I'm very, um, how would you describe how I've been, Chris? On edge. On edge, yeah. And everything just, it's too much. I was just like, sitting in the house trying to like in a quarter of a mile exit left or b260 and then leave the roundabout at the second exit thank you sat nav <laughs> i was just sitting in the living room trying to gather myself i've got sunglasses on because it's so bright <laughs> it's me guys <laughs> it's really hard to be in a car and not have my travel sickness meds but my mom has taken us on a route that's a little bit longer but it means we're on the motorway a little bit less so hopefully that will help um i don't know i've just <laughs> i don't even know what to say <laughs> does anyone else get like this when they're really nervous about an appointment or something but in other news one of my instagram friends who i've been friends with for like four or five years and she's been really ill and i hadn't heard from her for ages and i was really worried about her and so i saw her post and it just puts into perspective that when you feel really horrible there are always people in much worse situations but she's not doing well so send her your good vibes her name is Rebecca Papa Adams on Instagram. So I have to try my hardest to be chill. I think I'm freaking out. Chris, well, he's used to it. Oh, my mom. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm trying to distract myself as much as possible on the way there. So I promise I'm not normally this jittery or this panicky, but it's because they're looking to see if I'm going to faint or throw up today and um it's like I, I know i'm going there to faint and fainting really really scares me even though it happens a lot but anyway <laughs> i will show you some b-roll footage of the country roads we're currently going through right now and if this does make it to the internet <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> because this is going to be terrible Chris isn't allowed to come in with me, so it won't be like the echocardiogram link to that video up here where Chris was allowed to accompany me. It said specifically on the letter, I have to go in alone. So the, Chris won't be able to film and he won't be able to come in with me. So I don't know what I'm gonna film or get for you guys, but like I said, I'll try my best. And of course I'm gonna talk you through it and let you know what happens. So I'll see you in a bit. It's really cool that they've got the um, modified mm. pride flag. Mm. They didn't have that last Are you time. after that, the insurance yeah, case? Yeah, just saying, just saying. Mm. Chris setting up my wheelchair so I can get out of the car. There's always a kerfuffle, isn't it, to put the um, foot parts on. Ah, I'm becoming good. You are. Especially when we do Ubers, you're like extra fast. There we go. So, is that steady? Yeah. Hang on to this. Yeah, cool. Okay, let's go. How are you getting? You alright? I think. Yeah. It's alright, so I'll be. Okay, Mum. <laughs> you can give me the other one. Here 
here I'm just sharing some footage of us walking through the hospital. This is us walking through the corridors, trying to find the heart center. It has changed since the last time we've been here, so we got a little bit confused. Yeah, they've changed the way we go into the heart center, so it's a little bit more finicky. Oh, I know where we are now. Down that normal corridor. Okay. It's just a different entrance, it's isn't it? It's a more convoluted path in. Yeah. Maybe it's because it's a Monday and not a Sunday. There we are, heart centre. When I see the painting, I know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> there we are, there's my painting. <laughs> Doing. Uh, right. Trying to keep calm and be good. Be good. We are good. Not all the time. No. Are you good? Not good, but I'll be good. I'm sure I'll be good. You will be good. Otherwise, no pajamas. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this keeps me safe. Yeah. I'm good. What your collagen? Oh yeah, my collagen. <laughs> we'll see if my collagen is good. I've got these ready to put on my knees. Yeah. And Chris can't come in, so I'm not good. But we'll see. No. The, no. the nurse was really nice though. She just came up and spoke to me. And yeah. To calm me down a bit. So I hope you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> Yay. This is some footage of us leaving the hospital, just walking through the waiting areas and the outpatient section and eventually making our way to the part where there are shops such as Marks and Spencers and Costa Coffee. Just in the car now, about to leave. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Two hours later. Hey guys. So I've been back for a couple of hours now. I was thinking about filming this outro in a day or two when I gather my thoughts and let this sit with me for a little while but I didn't think it would be an accurate representation of how I feel and what happens so I'm literally just filming this now my mum just dropped us off and left and Chris and I have just been at home for a couple of hours and I've just been trying to think about the situation but anyway <laughs> You might want to know what happened so basically they wheeled me into the tilt table room i saw the consultant there was a technician with him and he sat me down asked me a few questions la -di da then he got me to lay down on the tilt table which is literally just like a flat bed um he strapped me in so i was strapped in my arms i was strapped on my belly and there were straps going along my knees when they tilt the table, sometimes you are upright and they want to make sure that you don't fall out. So, and also people tend to faint and stuff on those tilt tables. So just as a safety precaution. Anyway, I was strapped in, they put electrodes on me on both ankles right here and on both shoulders, on the top of my shoulders here. And then they started the test. I had some kind of device on my two fingers here, which was giving off electrical pulses. I could feel it pulsating. And then they had my arm slinged up. I know this is hard to imagine, <laughs> but it was like a whole process to get me set up in this tilt table. It probably took a good 10 minutes to set me up. And then on this arm, I had a blood pressure machine on me. So after we were done with our conversation and after I was done being strapped up, they started the test. Now, as soon as the test started, the blood pressure machine really tightened on my arm and I deal with a lot of pain. And so the pain came on and I said, I'm in a lot of pain. 
And then the doctor said, the reason why it's doing that is because you're very anxious and you need to calm down. And I was like, okay, but as you know, and as you saw on the journey, I'm very anxious when it comes to hospitals. It's very triggering for me. I have a lot of trauma surrounding how I've been treated in the past and I've done lots of therapy to help me with my anxiety when it comes to hospitals. So I said to him, I'm really nervous in hospitals and I'm gonna need a minute to just calm down. And he went to me, we're gonna have to abandon the test. And I said, please, I just need a minute because when I'm in this kind of a setting with all this medical equipment, I'm being strapped in, <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> And this is just like a fear of mine. I just need a minute to calm down. Because even when you go to the doctor's office, to the GP and they do a blood pressure test, they, they take into consideration that the first time when they do it, you'll be nervous. So sometimes they'll do it two or three times. So I don't know why he just didn't let me start again. I mean, we had a whole hour and a half booked off. They physically told me they had an hour and a half booked off for me to do this test. So I don't know why he didn't allow me to do that. And he went, no, we're abandoning the test. This test isn't for you. And so they called in my husband and basically got me to leave. And as Chris was there, Chris came to collect me so he can wheel me out. He was like, oh, she had an anxiety attack, which I didn't, by the way, I didn't have an anxiety attack. <laughs> I know what an anxiety attack is and all that happened was is that my blood pressure raised and I've devised a really good way of acting like I'm cool and acting normal in front of people like you saw me how I was crying in the car and I was upset and all these things but that's because I'm with my mum and with my husband and they don't judge me and they know fully well how hard this is for me but I was acting so cool, so chill. I was conversing with this doctor. He said to Chris, this test isn't for her. She needs to go and get her anxiety disorder sorted. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm not for a second saying I don't have anxiety, but he had no rights to say that to me. And I guess, that was the most shocking part. So not only did he not give me a minute, he was so quick to abandon the test, but he then went and told me that I need to get my anxiety disorder sorted out. <laughs> to which I responded, I've seen so many therapists over the years and I'm in the hospital. <laughs> you don't know how much it takes for me to step foot in the hospital and to actually do this, to actually be here, to be sitting here opposite you. And I was just thinking to myself, I cannot be the only person in the world who has heart problems, <laughs> who needs to go to the hospital for testing and has anxiety. Like what? <laughs> Even people who don't have anxiety have mild distress or nervousness when they go for hospital testing. I mean, what? <laughs> Editing Stella here. I just wanted to add that as soon as I came into my appointment, he started questioning me on where I'm from, where my name comes from, am I Eastern European? All these really irrelevant things that have nothing to do with my tilt table test. Then he started questioning me about who my doctor is that diagnosed me with lupus. Just to question me about that felt really off. And then he started commenting on other things like, have I seen a neurologist, which was kind of implying that it's in my head. And then just the fact that he didn't even give me a chance and just ended the test abruptly just makes me feel like he assumed that it's all in my head. And the fact that he said I need to sort out my anxiety disorder before I get any tests done. Potentially, I'm overthinking this, but... You know, I've spoken with Chris about this and my family and we think I should make a complaint because it just doesn't sit right with me, especially because my heart block is stage three and it's really serious. And my consultant cardiologist urgently requested that I get this table tilt test done urgently because it's important. And I just have to remind myself, 
that my heart condition is serious. So, yeah, I don't know what to make of it, but I'm just really, really, really disappointed with the situation. Chris willed me out and we went home and then that's the end of the story. <laughs> oh, I don't know, I'm just so upset. Like, I don't know whether I should make a complaint. I don't know whether I should accept it. Gosh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think I'd get upset, but... I'm sorry if this is the first video you're watching with me. I promise I'm not normally this <laughs> negative. I'm actually really upbeat. <laughs> But on the plus side, I've got new crutches because <laughs> my old crutches were so unstable. They weren't even safe. One of these um, bolts came out from the back and it wasn't even like safe. So <clears throat> I've got two new crutches, which is nice. Um, so that's a positive. But I guess my biggest fear is that he's going to put on my records that it's all in my head because this is like what I've dealt with and like I know I have anxiety but anxiety doesn't cause me to have heart block or for my heart to stop for 4.75 seconds for a doctor to then want to fit me with a pacemaker which I don't even know if I've spoken about um <laughs> welcome to my chaotic world where I share my thoughts and oh gosh I know there's so many of you with chronic illness who who understand completely what I'm going through but yeah Chris told me that I should film this and I should upload it because I wasn't sure if I was going to but I'm doing this for Chris and for those of you who have similar struggles please like this video subscribe and click that bell notification to get notified every time I post. I promise you the next one won't be a downer like this. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me. Thanks for watching. If you're having a tilt table test or you're having heart issues too, I'm thinking of you. And I guess I will let you guys know, fill you in with what happens next. <laughs>